Wow, it's a full house, that's great. On behalf of the president, I wanna welcome everybody here today. I have the great privilege of introducing one of the nation's heroes. Let me tell you about Sergeant Michael Verardo. Uh, Sergeant Verardo was deployed to Afghanistan in 2009 with the, <clears throat> with the 82nd Airborne. And this was not an easy assignment. This was really dangerous work. In fact, 37 of the men that Sergeant Verardo served with didn't return home. It was in 2010 that he was severely injured in an IED blast. He lost an arm, a leg, and 40% of his body had burns over it. He wasn't expected to survive the medical flight, but he did, fortunately, thanks to really what may be described as a miracle and certainly the support of his amazing wife, Sarah. 110 surgeries and years of therapy Michael's able to join us here today. And it's veterans like Michael that are the reason that the VA exists. It's why when I had the privilege of sitting in my office not too long ago with Michael and Sarah talking about their experience, that it was really heartbreaking for me to hear their story because the VA had failed Michael. He had to jump through one bureaucratic hoop after another just to try to get the services that he deserved and he had earned. In one situation, he had to wait 57 days just to get his prosthetic leg fixed. He had to wait three and a half years to be able to get the type of adaptions for his home that he needed to be able to live comfortably in his home. I'm pleased to say he's waiting no longer. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Michael's story isn't unique and that's the reason why we're so focused on fixing the VA and reforming the VA. The President and I are committed to fixing the VA and tackling the challenges that have been within the VA system for decades. Millions of veterans like Michael and their families are counting on us. So today we're here to celebrate an important step towards that reform of the VA. I'm thrilled that Michael and his wife Sarah are here with us today. They have two daughters in their home in North Carolina, and I think, as you'll see, expecting another very soon. Michael and Sarah, thank you for your service and sacrifice. You inspire all of us to do better. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sergeant Michael Verardo and Sarah. I am truly honored and humbled to be speaking here today. For as long as I can remember, I wanted to serve my country. And in the summer of 2009, I had the privilege of deploying as an infantryman with the 82nd Airborne to conduct op combat operations in southern Afghanistan. I prepared myself for the worst, death and dismemberment. On April 24th, 2010, I stepped on an improvised explosive device that caused life-altering injuries. My long road home has included over 100 surgeries and years of speech, visual, physical, and occupational therapies. I knew that such injuries were a risk of the enlistment that I made. What I was not prepared for was coming home to a broken VA system. I wasn't prepared to wait 57 days for a signature on a piece of paper so that my only prosthetic limb could be repaired. I wasn't prepared to be asked to make a three hour round trip so that just last year they could check to see if I still had my serious combat injuries. I wasn't prepared to watch my wife beg, plead, and make countless phone calls so that I could receive what was often basic and necessary medical care. But today is a new day, and this administration has fulfilled its promise that the veteran is empowered and the veteran is in charge of his or her own care. 
Under the previous administration, I waited over three and a half years for required adaptive changes to be made so that I could safely reside in my own home. Under President Trump, with the assistance of Secretary Shulkin, these changes were made within weeks. Today, our President, Donald Trump, will sign this important bill into law that will ensure real accountability for our nation's veterans. Dr. Shulkin will be empowered to ensure that the VA adheres to the standard of excellence it promotes, and that the employees who are at the VA are the ones that have a servant's heart for those that have worn our nation's uniform. The most difficult part of my war injuries were coming home to such a broken system. Thank you, President Trump and Secretary Shulkin, for ensuring that we are not forgotten and that we will receive the care we need and deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Michael and Sarah. I want you to know you're the reason why we're working night and day to make sure that we get this system working better and we're not gonna stop until we do better for families like yours. A few weeks ago, I was here at the White House and I had the chance to deliver a talk on the state of the VA. And in those remarks, I talked about 13 risks that VA faces in its reform. One of those was accountability. Veterans deserve an organization that they can trust that provides the highest quality services. Employees who act contrary to our core values erode that trust. And there's nothing more demoralizing to our workforce and to veterans when VA is forced to take employees back who have deviated from those values. I've talked about examples of employees who had three driving under the influence arrests, employees that taking care of veterans while watching pornography. And a system that allows this is clearly broken. We won't be able to accomplish any of the reforms that we need to in the VA if we don't get the right people in place. The Veterans Affairs Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act is gonna make it easier and quicker for us to hold our employees accountable while protecting our employees' rights to due process. The bill also gives us the additional flexibilities when it comes to hiring. It dramatically reduces the time that it takes to be able to put strong leaders in place in these important positions. I want to thank the members of Congress that are here today. Uh, this was a bipartisan effort. This was your leadership that allowed this to happen, and of course, the President will be able to sign this because of the work that you've done. I also want to thank our veteran service organizations who are in the audience today because your constant support to do the right thing for our veterans is so important for us. Over these past few months, we've accomplished a lot at VA. We've dramatically expanded access. We've published all of our wait times so that our veterans can see what those times are. We've reduced our times to process disability claims. We've launched the President's White House hotline. We've made decisions that are important in modernizing the VA. One of those was to replace our electronic medical record, to share one with the Department of Defense. And we started to modernize our facilities with new public-private partnerships and getting rid of vacant and underutilized properties. We've also reduced regulations. We've made it easier for states to be able to build state nursing homes without the federal guidelines, but to rely on their own. And most importantly, we've taken important steps to be able to reduce veteran suicides. We fixed the veterans crisis line. We've expanded mental health providers. And we've also expanded coverage to other than honorable veterans uh, who have been discharged. I want to thank President Trump for his leadership and determination to fix the VA. The president knows that we have to do better for our veterans. And so, it's actually a great honor today that the President will sign the Veterans Affairs Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act. I have the pleasure today of introducing the biggest champion veterans could hope for. Under his leadership and unwavering support, VA has been moving to solve many of these challenges that have been spanning multiple administrations over decades. Veterans deserve a VA that they can trust and take pride in. 
VA is a national resource that must be protected in order to serve veterans and the families for generations to come. President Trump understands this and knows that in order to fix the VA, we need to modernize our systems, improve access, and deliver the highest quality of care and services. Mr. President, today is no doubt a great day for veterans, their families, and the vast majority of VA employees who want nothing more than to give back to those who have sacrificed so much. Mr. President, thank you for your leadership and unwavering support for veterans. So it is with great pride that I introduce the 45th President of the United States, Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much, everybody. That's really greatly appreciated. And thank you to Secretary Shulkin for that introduction and for your really tireless efforts, David, to protect those who have really been protecting all of us for so long. These are great, great people. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Congratulations. In just a short time, we've already achieved transformative change at the VA. And believe me, we're just getting started. We have so many people that have been so helpful right here in the room, and Tom and all my friends. It's uh, been fantastic. The enthusiasm for the Veterans Administration and for making it right for our great veterans has been incredible. And I want to thank all of them. One of my greatest honors and joys during the presidential campaign was the time I spent going all across the country with our nation's really and truly incredible veterans. In their courage, their dignity, and their selfless sacrifice, they represent the very best of us. Our veterans have fulfilled their duty to this nation, and now we must fulfill our duty to them. So to every veteran who is here with us today, I just want to say two very simple words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the warriors and heroes who have won our freedom. And we will never forget what you have done for all of us, ever. As you all know all too well, for many years, the government failed to keep its promises to our veterans. We all remember the nightmare that veterans suffered during the VA scandals that were exposed a few years ago. Veterans were put on secret wait lists, given the wrong medication given the bad treatments and ignored in moments of crisis for them. Many veterans died waiting for a simple doctor's appointment. What happened was a national disgrace, and yet some of the employees involved in these scandals remained on the payrolls. Outdated laws kept the government from holding those who failed our veterans accountable. Today, we are finally changing those laws. It wasn't easy, but we did have some fantastic help to make sure that the scandal of what we suffered so recently never, ever happens again, and that our veterans can get the care they so richly deserve. So you just heard from Sergeant Michael Ferrardo. Great. I didn't get to shake your hand, Michael. Huh? Get up, Michael. Get up. <laughs> he 
He gets up better than I do. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Michael lost two limbs in defending our country, and yet he had to wait 57 days to get his prosthetic leg repaired. It's a long time, Michael. And over three and a half years for modifications to make his house more accessible. What happened to Michael is happening to many, but it's rarely happening under our leadership and David's leadership anymore. That I can tell you. Our wounded warriors have given everything they have to this nation, and we owe them everything we have in return, and we're taking care of it. Today, we are taking a very historic action to transform the VA by enacting the VA Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act. This was not easy. This was not an easy one. And it's one that they've wanted to do, Michael, you know, for a long time, for many years. Couldn't get it done. We got it done. This is one of the largest reforms to the VA in its history. It's a reform that I campaigned on, and now I am thrilled to be able to sign that promise into law. VA accountability is essential to making sure that our veterans are treated with the respect they have so richly earned through their blood, sweat, and tears. This law will finally give the VA secretary, who is, by the way, just doing some job, and he's doing it with this and with the heart. Believe me. It gives the Secretary the authority to remove Federal employees who fail and endanger our veterans, and to do so quickly and effectively. It's been a long time since you've heard those words. Those entrusted with the sacred duty of serving our veterans will be held accountable for the care they provide. It's a big statement. At the same time, this bill protects whistleblowers who do the right thing. We want to reward, cherish, and promote the many dedicated employees at the VA. This legislation also gives the VA Secretary the authority to appoint new medical directors at VA hospitals, something which was almost impossible to do in the past. And these are going to be talented, talented people. I applaud Chairman Phil Rowe and the members of Congress here with us today, which we have many, who fought so hard for this legislation. And I want them up here when I sign. And I just want to thank the members of Congress. Uh, they have been really dedicated to getting this done. It was not easy for them, either. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our very sincere gratitude, as well, to the veteran service organizations who have joined us for this tremendous occasion and for everything they do for the veterans and for so long. They've been fighting for this and other things so long. And by the way, other things are happening. We've done a lot. This is a big one. We have a lot of good ones coming. I also want to express our appreciation for Secretary Shulkin, who is implementing the dramatic reform throughout the VA. It's got to be implemented. If it's not properly implemented, it will never mean the same thing. But I have no doubt it will be properly implemented. Right, David? Uh, better be David. Uh, we'll never have to use those words. We'll never have to use those words on our David. We will never use those words on you, that's for sure. <laughs> that one never fails, does it, Todd? <laughs> Since my first day in office, we've taken one action after another to ensure our veterans and make sure — I have to make sure — that they get 
world-class care and the kind of care that they've been promised by so many different people for so many years. We've created a new Office of Accountability at the VA, which will empower and really has been empowered by this legislation. We've launched a new website that publishes wait times at every VA hospital. We've delivered same-day mental health service at all 168 VA medical centers. That's a big operation when you think of it. We've announced that the VA will finally solve a problem that has plagued our government for decades, seamlessly transferring veterans' medical records from the Department of Defense to the Department of Veteran Affairs. Now, that doesn't sound like such a big deal. It is, believe me. That was a big one. We thought this would be easy, but the people like David and all that have been here and understand the system, he said, that's going to be a tough one. We got it done. So that was a good one. But it, it is something we're very proud of to have been able to do it this quickly. I've also signed the Veterans Choice Improvement Act so that more veterans can see the doctor of their choice. Already this year, using the Choice Program, veterans have received nearly double the number of approvals to see the doctor of their choosing. And this is only the beginning. We will not rest until the job is 100 percent complete for our great <laughs> veterans. We can all be inspired by the story of a retired Air Force veteran named Earl Morse, who served as a physician's assistant at the VA centers in Ohio and Indiana. Thirteen years ago, Earl began asking his patients if they plan to visit New World War II Memorial, which is beautiful, right here in Washington, D.C. Nearly all said they planned to visit, but when he saw these patients at their next appointment, almost none of them had made the trip. One day, he had an idea. Earl is a private pilot. He asked one of his patients, who was a World War II veteran, if he could fly with him to the memorial. He was so honored to do it. The 80-year-old veteran wept, openly cried. He never imagined he would see that beautiful monument to his service. That is how First Honor Flight was born. Honor Flight. Very beautiful thing. Since then, over 100,000 veterans have been greeted with cheers of gratitude as they arrive in our nation's capital. We want all of American veterans, all of them, every one of them, to experience and to at least have the opportunity to experience that same gratitude every time they walk into the VA. That's what today is all about, keeping our promises to those who have kept us free, kept us happy, saved our lives, and saved our families. So I just want to thank you, our incredible veterans. We stand with you. We salute you. And with this new legislation, we strive to better support and serve you every single day. Thank you. God bless you. God bless our veterans. And God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you.
this is something that we are all very proud to be signing. It's a tremendous honor for me. It's a tremendous honor for everybody on stage. And we're taking care of our veterans, and we're taking care of them properly. Thank you, David. Congratulations. Thank you again, Michael. Congratulations. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Nice to see you.